Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own artificial chimney breast so you can have a very modern, state-of-the-art, bespoke, panoramic electric fire just like this in any room of your house. Whether you live in a new build without a chimney breast or an old traditional house that may have had the original chimney breast removed, you can still have a HD flame effect fire installed. The bespoke electric range has various models from standard inset units right through to one, two and three sided luxury panoramic models with 10,000 different combinations in one fire. You'll find in the instruction manual a diagram of what we're going to construct today. The fireplace will consist of two separate sections, all made out of 3B2 timber. The base section will get made up first. Once that's completed, it'll get offered into position, levelled up and screwed into the wall. Then the fireplace will sit directly on top of that. Then we can get the measurements from the top of the fireplace to the top of your ceiling height and then construct the second section. Once this is complete, it'll be firmly fixed to the ceiling and the wall so it takes the weight because we don't want any of the weight of the top of the breast sitting directly onto the fire. When you receive your fire, you'll find it's been shipped in 6mm reinforced double boxed packaging with full foamed impact coating surrounding for maximum protection. Now my fire is out of the box, I can take some measurements to start constructing my frame. Now my panoramic version I've chosen is 1500 millimeters, but they do come in different lengths. I'll take a measurement from the top section of the fire, right the way across to here. And the frame that I need to construct for the 1500 millimeter one is 1,492 millimeters in length. and 320 millimeters in width. Now I'm going to begin by cutting a kit apart out of the 3B2 timber, starting with the base section. We want this to be 1,492 millimeters in length, about here, to suit the 1,500 mil fire. Now I'm going to be using a chop saw to do my cuts, but of course if you haven't got a chop saw, you can always use a hand saw. Just double check my length. Perfect. So I'm going to cut four of these in total. So I'm going to place these two here, put them aside for a moment. And I want to create this frame to be 600 millimetres wide because the fire itself is going to stand 600 millimetres off the floor. But I want to cut four more sections now at 510 millimetres. So I'll use these off cuts. 510. I'm going to take a measurement from here, around about 480 millimetres mark, so I've got these noggins spaced out relatively equally. Perfect. So now I'm happy with the position where they are. I'm just going to do a quick line across here. This is just so I line up my screws and make sure when I'm screwing through one side of the timber, it grabs the opposite timber right in the centre. And then I get my pilot's hole and drill some holes in between here to stop the wood from splitting. Okay, so now they're drilled in. I can place this back up onto these sections and start fixing them together. Now I'm going to be using four inch screws. They're five millimeters thick. So that's now my second frame, now complete. I'll bring my first section I made up. That's gonna go here. Now I need to cut some further noggins in between to hold this section together to complete the base. So the width of these, I wanna create it to be 320 millimeters, which was the bottom of the fire. Take my measurement on here at 320, leaves me a 170 
four millimeters noggins in between. Perfect. So one, two, three, five, six. Six of them I need to cut all in all. So that's my six sections now cut. I'm going to start to fix these together again using the four inch screws, drilling some pilot holes so the timber doesn't split. Making sure that's nice and flush and square there with your cut. So that's the last noggin now fitted. All six of them, one on each corner and then one in the center. That's holding the front and back piece firmly together. This is ready to be put into position, leveled up, now fixed to the wall, ready for the fire to sit on. Now once you've worked out your location, where your chimney breast is going to be, employ a qualified electrician to fit your power points. Now I'm going to, going to fit a single double socket, a 13 amp one, to power the fire and also the TV above. But depending on what type of TV you're going to use, you may need to consider an aerial or another media point. Now I've actually used a couple of little small packs if there's a little bit of a discrepancy in your floor, pack it out to the bottom to make sure you get the frame perfectly level. Now I'm going to fix it to the wall by using some small angle brackets. Now on my wall here I've got stud and then actual wooden boards on there before it's plastered so I can drive my screws directly in them. You at home may have a solid wall with a plasterboard on top of it so you will need to drill through the brickwork, put a raw plug in and then screw the bracket into position. So now the first section of the frame is firmly fixed to the wall and level. I can place the fire in position. Now you'll find with the instructions you'll have six of these black angle brackets. We need to fix these on. You'll see these silver screws here. Unscrew them out. Don't throw them away because we're going to need them to screw this bracket back into position. Now the six of them you have, three of them goes along the top, which the other two are already in position now, and three more of them along the bottom. So now the fire is fixed to the base frame, we can take our measurements from the top of the fire right the way up to the ceiling and start constructing the second frame. My top frame wants to be 1290 millimeters high, but double check yours at home. I'm gauging it off a standard eight foot ceiling height, but measure directly from the top of the fire all the way up to the top of the ceiling. So again, I'm using the same 3B2 timber. We've cut two sections of these to start with. So that's two lengths cut at 1290 millimetres. I'm going to set them. We want to create these to be 320 millimetres, the same as the base section. So my noggins in between here are 175 millimetres and I need to cut four of them. So they're more or less equally spaced. I'm now going to fix this together using the four inch screws just like we did with the base frame. So that's both sides of the top section now complete. I'm going to offer these up into position and then cut the braces for the centre holding them in place. I'll take my first one, place that in between here at the front, in between there. I'm going to stand up right on top of those brackets and flush there. Likewise with the rest of the frame, I'm going to drill some pilot holes. To be able to stop the wood from splitting and help it bite into the adjacent piece. So the second section, I'll slip it behind the cable there. That's going to get fitted a little bit higher. It's actually going to stand at about 200 millimetres high and it's going to be there for a number of reasons. One, it holds the actual frame together, keeps it square, stops these bits from bowing out. The second reason is we can actually drill through there and fix it to the wall. And the third reason is I can place a piece of MDF on the top of it here for when we build our fascia board on the front of it. It can meet that position. Now that's had two screws in both sides, holding it firmly together. I'm going to fix the next two pieces of timber at the top, flush up against the ceiling. Mm -hmm. 
Them four pieces are now holding the two side sections in place. All I need to do now is screw and fix these to the wall and to the ceiling so there is no weight resting on top of the fire. So drill four clearance holes into this back section of timber here. I'm going to screw them firmly into the wall. Now remember, I've got wooden boards behind my plasterboard here, but you at home may have a brick wall. So you're going to have to drill it with a masonry drill bit, put in a raw plug, and then drive your screws in. So that's nice and solid now into the wall. It's a little bit more trickier getting the fixing of the frame into the ceiling but a great way of doing that is because you need to find the beams above the plaster of course you can't see through the plasterboard so if you get yourself a stud detector i'll do a little example on here when you put it across your ceiling board it'll find a piece of timber behind it the alarm will go off and the light will go up once you've found the timber joists above the ceiling mark with a pencil then drill further pilot holes through the wooden frame driving your screws into the ceiling boards making sure that you bite firmly the joists above. I'm applying six individual four inch screws. Now them two sections are screwed into the side of the frames holding them into position. I've set that one at the back upright that'll allow me to screw through here for extra protection grabbing onto the wall and of course these are flush along here now depending on what size television you choose to sink into the recess i'm going to be using a 55 inch television so the opening between these two battens is about 830 millimeters this will allow me to clad the underside of it with 15 millimeters mdf and clad the section here with 15 millimeters mdf and then i've got enough space to get my fingers around to pull the television in and out if we need access to the plugs behind. Whichever size panoramic fire you choose, you've got an option of one, two, or three sides. When you take it out of the packaging, of course you've got the one side, which is the front. Then you've got the option to take out one of these metal panels off the side and create a two-sided fire, or have the third side open by taking this panel off as well. It's quick and easy to do. You simply screw the seven screws off the side, like this. This panel comes away. That way, as you can see now, you've got the two sides of the glass visible, but you must put the trim back on in the existing position to help as a finish bead for when you clad your board on the sides and above the top. Now I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. So I've applied three further screws into these brackets that we put on earlier, just to hold the top of the fire into the bottom of this frame. And that is my structure now complete. The next stage is, is to clad it with 15 millimeters MDF. I'm going to cut the sections to start with the inside section of here that's the recess where the tv is going to sit then the second stage is is to clad both sides top and bottom and then the third stage is to clad the face of it along the bottom here and up along the front and right the way around the top now as well as gluing them mdf panels on the side i'm also going to screw them in so I'll drill the clearance hole in, then I'll use a countersink tip. This will allow the screw to be sunk in deeper than the actual MDF surface. So now I can apply some filler on that, let it dry, sand it down, and you paint over it and it'll be completely invisible. You may prefer to cover your wooden frame with plasterboard. Then the plasterboards can be skimmed, which of course is also a perfect finish. The wet plaster might take a little bit longer to dry before you can paint it. You may want to put some further fault into the size of your opening for your TV. You may be considering to put further items in there like a soundbar or a DVD recorder. Now you can fit your TV bracket in the desired location. 
The paint's dry, the skating boards are fitted, and a television has been mounted to the bracket. I'm ready to start now laying out the fuel beds, but first of all, I've got to remove the front glaze panel. I do that by removing four small screws on the top of the panel, just by the vent. Now the glazing's removed, I can start to display my fuel bed. With all the bespoke ranges, it comes with a variety of different options and items. From white pebbles, large ice crystals, HD log set, clear gems, and smoke gems. But I'm choosing to use the HD log effect for my fire. Now you may be thinking, does this kind of unit and this structure built around it require ventilation? Well, don't worry, the unit draws in air from both sides, from the front underside, pushing the heat out from the center if required. So you can rest assured that the heat from your fire, if you choose to use it, is blowing downwards away from the unit. There is no direct heat coming up towards the TV. Once you've installed any of the award-winning bespoke range HD fires, you can sit back and relax, knowing that all units come with a full manufacturer's warranty. They're adaptable to every customer's requirements, with over 10,000 different combinations. Various colours, speeds, flame brightness, fuel beds with hot and cold fan systems. These can even be controlled by the remote control in your hand or the touch panel on the unit. That's how quick and easy it is to build your own artificial chimney breast so you can fit your own bespoke electric fireplace. If you'd like to see the full range of premium bespoke fires or learn more about how the latest technology can benefit you, please visit the website bespokefireplace.co.uk